Hey guys, Quantum back here again, bringing you the final set of battles for my rank 10 run in season three. This is part two of the video. As you can see there, we ended up making the leaderboard in just 220 matches for a 31-29 end of season rating. We hit rank 10 and 145 wins in just 215 battles, but we played the extra set to get the Pikachu Libre and ended up making the leaderboard in those little matches as well. So I'm going to go ahead and start commentating these matches. To start off, we're met uh, with the Togekiss lead. If you watched my previous video, you would have seen how we messed this up in the past. But this first opponent plays this matchup really, really well. And they're going to swap into their Magnezone here. And we don't really have an answer for Magnezone. We could technically go into our Snorlax. But since I have two other Pokemon on the team that can technically deal with Togekiss, the Snorlax definitely can. The Gyarados with Dragon Breath will struggle a little bit, but it can still deal some decent damage to the Togekiss. I opt to actually stay in here because I want to do as much damage to this Magnezone as possible to get it um, either low or get the shields out of the way. So the opponent is still switch locked in here for a little bit longer and I'm not even waiting for them to fire off additional wild charges because I don't want to risk them building up and switching out when their timer comes out since our uh, swaps are so out of sync. The opponent's switch timer does end up expiring and they swap into a Shadow Machamp which obviously is the worst thing a Snorlax can see. So at this stage, I'm in a really tough position because I gave up switch priority and my Snorlax is going to go down to the Shadow Machamp and obviously uh, Magnezone does not have a good matchup against Shadow Machamp. So I have to go into my Gyarados here, shield up the Rock Slide. My opponent already burned both of their shields, so at least I'm going to be able to farm down this Shadow Machamp and leave with a bit of an energy advantage for the next matchup. I anticipate that they're going to bring in the Magnezone to try to spark or get as much damage as they can on the Gyarados, but they actually go into the Togekiss, and then when I make a fast swap, they mirror the fast swap with their own Magnezone. They did switch out with energy, but at this stage, I can farm down the Magnezone because it was so low and it threw its energy and it, it had its defense debuff. So Gyarados ends up taking out the Magnezone. We're still with a huge energy advantage going into this Togekiss matchup, and this is what I mean. I wasn't too worried about lining up the Magnezone with the Togekiss because I knew that both of my Pokemon had relatively decent matchups against the Togekiss. If I can either get the Togekiss low, the Gyarados can come in and finish it off, or if I can have an energy advantage on the Gyarados, I should be able to edge out the match against the Togekiss, and that's exactly what happens with the Sliver of Health. We win by like one charm's worth of damage. If the opponent would have gotten an extra charm, we probably would have lost that match. So really tight match in the beginning, really, you know, kudos to my opponent for making that a much more competitive match than it should have been. I probably misplayed there, but I haven't really gone back and analyzed it too deeply, but the opponent played really, really well to almost salvage that really bad lead. All right, into the next matchup here. I actually ran into three three or four of these Haxorus Double Steel lineups, and uh, the first two or three times I ran into it, it completely wiped the floor with me. Like, there was nothing I can do. Even though I land the Earthquake on the Metagross swap in, I can realign my Pokemon appropriately this team just wreaked havoc. So I actually altered my team because in general, the Dragon Double Steel, whether it be Dragonite, Garchomp, or Haxorus in the lead with the Magnezone and Metagross in the back, pretty common line up in the upper ranks of uh, going towards rank 10 in season three. It was a problem for this team. And so I actually swapped my team out for I think three or four matches where I ran like Togekiss, Gyarados with a Waterfall, and um, uh, what was the third Pokemon? I forget what it was. Whatever counters um, Magnezone, Garchomp in the back, I think it was, uh, specifically to counteract this Dragon Double Steel team. And I actually ran into two, um, two Dragon Double Steel teams out of the four matches that I played. So I ended up taking those two matches quite convincingly. Um, and I, I took one against a streamer, I think, as well. I've seen him play before, and I know he runs like Flash Cannon on his Magnezone, and I actually shielded up his Flash Cannon. Um, but it's a it's a really strong team. It's in my opinion the Haxorus Double Steel line is the strongest in the meta. But it's not even worth commentating this match because it, there's virtually nothing I can do. I don't think I'm at such a huge disadvantage with with this particular team. Um, and the reason I'm not showing the matches where I went up with that Togekiss team in the lead is because this showcase is basically showing you this team that I'm using, which is really good against the rest of the meta. It just it struggles against the Dragon Double Steel line. So if you run into that. Um, you do have some play, but you really have to bank on taking out the Magnezone in the back and then lining up the Gyarados with the Dragon that's in the lead. So it is doable, but it is very, very tough to do. And you can see there we ended up losing that match. Um, there was probably some stuff we could do, but it's, it's really tough to come back from that. 
So yeah, just moving on to the next match. Um, this is actually part of the same clip, so I sometimes I just go back to back if I lose a match. I, I usually end up taking a break if I win a match and just kind of collect myself and then go into the next match. Um, and my final set in this in this uh, video, I actually stagger out my final set over the course of I think two days. Um, and you're gonna see that because I think I started with six days left in the Go Battle League and I finish it with like four days left in the Go Battle League. Uh, but anyways, going into this next matchup, we're met with a, with a positive lead, which is the Metagross. Uh, this is really, really positive. And this is a pretty straightforward matchup. We're just going to build up the two Wild Chargers, shield the opponent's first move because we can't take the risk that it's an Earthquake. And the opponent is very unlikely to double shield their Metagross in these scenarios. So if we get one Wild Charge through, the play is to switch into Snorlax to try to lick down the Metagross or force the opponent to switch because our, our own Magnezone should be fairly healthy still. We switch out of that matchup, the Metagross very low, and we can get an energy advantage with the Snorlax coming into the secondary matchup. And unless the opponent swaps in like a Dragonite or a Garchomp or something, Snorlax can usually have a lot of play against whatever the opponent swaps in. Or, you know, or a, not, not a counter user like a Haxorus or Machamp. Uh, but anyways, the opponent swaps in a Togekiss, so they have two Pokemon that's really weak to Magnezone. And this kind of leads me to believe, you know, they might have like a Dragonite uh, or a Garchomp in the back. So I have to bring in my, my uh, Magnezone to get a bit of an energy advantage in farming down the Togekiss. And I want to see what they end up bringing back in. And look at this, it ends up being the Metagross. So I knew this was kind of a medium match, but the fact that they brought in a Metagross and not like a Dragonite or a um, Garchomp led me to believe that their third Pokemon might be also weak to, Meta, uh, to uh, Magnezone, which the only real thing in the meta left, it would be a Gyarados. And sure enough, it is a Gyarados. So that's why I ended up shielding that uh, Meteor Mash, even though I knew it was going to be a Meteor Mash. And you can see that we comfortably took that match after <laughs> after getting that Dragon Double Steel line. We, we got a... a an opponent's team that we completely hard counter. Magnezone completely wipes the floor with that team. So we end up going three and two in that set because th that was one of the sets where I went up against two Dragon Double Steel teams in the same set and we lost both of them. So I showcased one of them. The other loss that we took was even worse than that one. So at least I showed you the one or you saw the one where I actually had some play. I think in the other one that I lost, uh, the opponent ended up shielding the Earthquake from the Snorlax. So there was like virtually no chance of us winning Switch. Um, and it was just a lost cause. I think I ended up leaving that match too because I realized there was nothing I could do. So no, no sense in showing that one because like I said, it's, it's pretty hard to come back from. All right, into this next matchup here, we're met with a Swampert lead. Again, a very difficult thing for Magnezone to see in the lead, but if we can kind of maneuver around the switches um, and gain a bit of an energy advantage with the Magnezone, we actually can have some play against Swampert. But check this out, so we go in with the Snorlax, the opponent throws a Hydro Cannon, we, we don't shield it, but the opponent opts to swap in their own Magnezone. And usually I think that opponents anticipate superpower, but one superpower doesn't KO a Magnezone, it does get it fairly low. So the opponent might have some incentive to shield, but they don't. And because of that, we ended up nuking the Magnezone in one shot with our Earthquake on the Snorlax. That was really, really cool to see. Um, it, well, the opponent opts to bring in their Metagross and technically this is not necessarily something I should have done in throwing the Body Slam because that just allowed the opponent to farm extra. If I didn't throw that Body Slam, the opponent might have just thrown their Meteor Mash right away so that we didn't get off our energy and that would have allowed us to ensure that the Metagross didn't leave with, an, with a bit of energy bank. However, the opponent does opt to um, swap into their Swampert. So at this stage, we're just like, all right, well, we're going to line up the Gyarados with it because this is a really positive matchup for us. We shield up the Sludge Wave correctly, that was pretty huge, but at this stage, I think we pretty much have this game uh, wrapped up, thankfully. Uh, so we were able to avoid the Swampert lining up with the Magnezone, and I let this one go through because even if it's a Sludge Wave, I can essentially just farm down this Swampert, but we the opponent ends up going for Hydro Cannon, so even better for us. I will shield this one because it's most likely a Sludge Wave, so we correctly call the baits on this uh, opponent, and they opt to go into their Metagross, Mm, built up a little bit of energy, so if I would have gone straight for the Aqua Tail, I probably would have landed it, but a Meteor Mash wouldn't have taken me out anyways. As you can see there, we survived it, and we're going to be able to throw this Crunch into the Metagross to take it out, and then easily farm down the Swampert for the win. So Gyarados, tons of play on this team, does really well against Swampert, and Metagross, that opponent was obviously using the Swampert Double Steel line, which is kind of like the Dragon Double Steel, really hard for us to deal with, but if we can land uh, the Earthquake on the with the Snorlax, as you see there, it was really, really good for us. All right, so this, I think, is the final match of the set that put us one set away from rank 10. And we're going up against another rank 10, leading with a Metagross. So this is, again, really, really positive for us. 
experienced a bit of lag. Hopefully the opponent didn't get in, get in a lot of extra bullet punches. But we have two wild charges back to back. We're gonna fire them both off. Get a shield, that's good, because we shielded once. And this is gonna get the Metagross very low. As usual, just like clockwork, we're gonna switch into our Snorlax, gain a bit of an energy advantage. And I'm fine with this at this stage because the opponent swaps into Dragonite. Technically a losing matchup for Snorlax, but we do have a bit of an energy advantage. But the Metagross is so low that um, we're fine with losing this matchup because we can come in with either the, the Magnezone or the Gyarados to farm down the Dragonite and have an energy advantage for the third Pokemon in the back. And I think the play here would be to come in with the Gyarados because I can essentially shield up anything that the Metagross might throw if they opt to come in with the Metagross. Or if they come in with like a Garchomp or something, obviously having an energy advantage on the Gyarados would be really, really good. So let's see what we come in here with. I mean, traditionally, sense would dictate that we come in with Magnezone, but if the opponent had ended up having a Garchomp in the back, um, having an energy advantage on the uh, Magnezone wouldn't really make a difference. So we opt to come in with the Gyarados to gain the energy advantage. The opponent does though have a Toekiss in the back. So we're gonna easily just swap into our um, uh, Magnezone after we get the or we throw the Aqua Tail on the Togekiss. We're gonna shield up the uh, Meteor Mash because we want to keep this Magnezone fairly healthy. We don't want to potentially get farmed down by the Togekiss. And at this stage, we're just gonna go for Mirror Shots. The opponent technically could go for a Flamethrower if they were able to farm us down, but we have such an energy advantage at this stage. The opponent ended up falling for the bait. If they end, ended up not shielding that Mirror Shot, we just would have went for Continuous Mirror Shot. But because they shielded uh, and we had the energy for a wild charge. We just wild charge the Togekiss and finish it off. So we go 4-1 in that set. Um, I think the loss in that one was also to, I think maybe a Garchomp double steal. Either that or a Dragonite double steal. I think I lost to another double steal line though in that set. Um, so that was that was really unfortunate, <laughs> but it does happen. So at this stage, we're, we're at uh, 29.55. And we're going into our final set that's going to lead us into rank 10. Find a match right away. This was definitely not the case as I was playing throughout the rest of the, of the, of the day or the next day as I was continuing on these matches. But we're met with uh, technically a bad lead in the Mammal Swine. We're going to go straight for Mirror Shots. These do about 33% to Mammal Swine. So it's not as bad of a matchup as long as you don't get bulldozed, obviously, because it will one-shot the Magnezone. So we can't take the risk. We do have to burn a shield here, even though it's most likely an Avalanche. Yep but we're gonna continuously just go for these mirror shots. These Powder Snows and the Avalanches don't really do that much damage to Magnezone, but since we ended up getting through two, um, two mirror shots, we do get the Mammal Swine very low. So we opt to switch into our Snorlax to try to lick down or gain an energy advantage. Sure enough, the opponent opts to swap out with energy on their Mammal Swine, but they swap into a Metagross. Go for the classic, the Earthquake Nuke. The opponent doesn't shield we're able to win switch. So this is actually kind of good for us. We do need to maintain our shield for the Gyarados because that Mammal Swine does have a Avalanche loaded and it will do 51% to Gyarados. So we need to make sure that essentially at this stage we save the shield for Gyarados. But now we're going to realign our Magnezone with the opponent's Gyarados. And at this stage, like it's actually not even worth going for charge moves because the spark damage against the Gyarados will bring it fairly low and then our own Dragon Breath Gyarados can easily take out the uh, Waterfall Gyarados when it's this low. And the opponent's gonna burn all their energy on our Magnezone, this is perfectly fine. Um, and then when the Memo Swine comes back in, all we have to do is shield the, the Avalanche. We don't even really need to shield it, but we might as well. But you can see here the Memo Swine is so low that we can just Dragon Breath it down. So this opponent ends up losing with two shields um, and we're able to take that match. That was really good. Uh, that was the only match I played that day because um, it was in the evening and I had some stuff to finish up. But the next day, I opt to uh, continue on early in the morning or afternoon, and we're met with a Garchomp lead. Really, really weird team comp. Who leads a Garchomp and then has a Dragonite swap it in the back? What do they do against Togekiss, right? You don't really expect opponents to have like Machamp swap ins or something that's double weak to Togekiss in the back if they're leading with a Garchomp. But this is why you think that Snorlax is a reasonably good safe swap if you run into like a Garchomp lead, but it's not in this case. So we're gonna definitely lose the secondary matchup. I think I shielded once already. Yeah, I did, but the opponent is easily gonna match shields in order to maintain switch. So this is not ideal for us. We're gonna have to try to come up with some other kind of game plan here to take out uh, the opponent's Garchomp. Essentially at this stage, because I burned a, uh, a shield though, I have to save my final shield for the Gyarados. 
because I have to anticipate they have a Metagross in the back and that Gyarados can deal with the, um, the opponent's Magnezone and their, and their Metagross that I'm anticipating they have in the back. So yeah, we farm down the Dragonite with the Magnezone and I think I opt to actually just keep the Magnezone in here because I want the Gyarados, or sorry, I want the um, Garchomp to throw its energy because I wasn't fast enough on the swap. I can't have this Garchomp with a large energy advantage going up against my Gyarados. So I want them to burn some energy at least uh, they probably still have some residual energy, but once they burn their energy, that's when I make the immediate swap. The opponent also swaps into uh, Metagross, but again, that Garchomp does not have a move ready, locked and loaded to throw against our Gyarados. So we can save our shield for the Outrage or opt to shield one of two potential Meteor Mashes. I try to get the opponent's second shield here with the Aqua Tail, they don't shield. I'm thinking that they might opt to save their shield for the Garchomp because they think that that is what's going to close for them. So I, I take a risky play here and go for the Crunch. We land it, so the opponent was actually only able to get through one Meteor Mash. This is really good for us because we have our shield that we're going to use now for the Gyarados. And we're going to be able to do enough damage with these Dragon Breaths to take out the uh, Garchomp. But again, we're just going to go ahead. Probably didn't need to throw this Aqua Tail because I could essentially just farm down the opponent. But this, I think, I think we potentially could have lost. If I didn't throw that Aqua Tail, I might have been able to just farm down the opponent before they got to an Outrage. So that was my misplay, but thankfully we were able to do the Sack Swap and take that match. That was a really close one. Really, really tough. And I had to take a break from that. I was like, wow, I can't believe I came back from that. Uh, so really, two really tough leads for my first two matches. Um, and then later on in the day, I came back and thankfully we, met, we got met with the Togekiss lead. The opponent swaps in a Dragonite. That's really good for us. We're just going to stay in, throw the um, wild Charge and then switch into Gyarados to finish off the Dragonite. Technically a mistake, I should have gone into my Snorlax because I landed the Wild Charge, easily could have gone into Snorlax and saved the Gyarados for a potential Garchomp in the back. Togekiss Double Dragon is a line that has seen some play, so this was technically a mistake on my part. I don't think the opponent was lagging there, I think they wanted to get some damage on their Togekiss for whatever reason. Um, but they do end up taking out our Gyarados. Thankfully, we survived the Outrage on the Gyarados. That was uh, something I was not expecting. And we could have royally screwed up this match if the opponent had a Garchomp in the back and one switch advantage. But they do have a Swampert in the back, which is fine. We're going to end up um, throwing the energy that we have on the Magnezone against the Swampert. It does around 30%. And then we're going to go into our Snorlax, which has a comfortable match against the uh, Swampert. So the opponent still does have two shields but they opt not to shield uh, their Swampert, so I'm not really sure what they're doing here. They probably should have committed both shields, and they maybe could have had their Swampert take out the Snorlax and then line up the Magnezone, um, or have some, some of their Swampert left to line up against our Magnezone, but because the Magnezone has such an overwhelmingly positive matchup against Togekiss, um, I guess they were banking on just trying to save their shield for the Togekiss, but Snorlax against Togekiss is a really positive matchup, so this is, in my opinion, a huge misplay for my opponent. They needed to commit both their shields to their Swampert, that was their win condition. Trying to take out the uh, Snorlax with the Swampert, and then just using whatever they had left with the Swampert to try to take out the Magnezone. So we end up easily taking that match, and then the fourth match here, we're met with another Togekiss lead. So two bad leads, and then two positive leads. Even better, the opponent swaps in a Metagross. This is perfect, they end up not shielding, so this is just lining up perfectly for us. Togekiss, Metagross, two things that Magnezone wants to see. They let the Wild Charge go through, so like Clockwork, we're gonna swap into the Snorlax. The opponent doesn't even go for a charge move and lets, lets their Metagross go down without shielding it, losing all that energy. My guess is they wanted to farm up energy on their Togekiss, but just like the last opponent, I'm not really understanding the logic here because the Snorlax is gonna get the Togekiss very low, so they're gonna have to end up burning shields to keep the Togekiss alive. And yeah, they'll have a flamethrower, but they should have technically thrown the energy on their uh, Metagross or at least shielded that so that they can get some damage through on the Snorlax. So we get the Togekiss really low and then sure enough, the opponent has a Garchomp in the back. Since they swapped, we're gonna also swap into our Gyarados. They did get quite a bit of an energy advantage because we weren't expecting them to swap. So we were a little bit slow on our own swap, but you never shield the first one. It ends up being an outrage, which is fine. We can definitely look to continue to Dragon Breath down this uh, Garchomp. The opponent ends up not shielding or burning their last shield to shield the Aqua Tail. And at this stage, we don't even need to shield the second one because the Garchomp is so low. Our, Toge our uh, Snorlax can come in and easily take it out. The opponent opts to bring in their Togekiss. They're gonna throw up 
flamethrower. We could technically two shield flex them, but don't take the risk. Just shield it up, spark down, and take the win. So that was my run to rank 10. The final match ended up being up against Lolar Socks, who gifted me a win. So big shout out to Lolar Socks. And we ended up going 5 0 in our final set. Um, you can see there 145 and 215 matches, rank 10, and the screen glitches. But that is it, guys. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you enjoyed this team. But Quantum is out.